for this lesson, I'm going to show you how I make a study for a painting. This is a lesson that can be used and modified to any project that you are working on. May it be still lives, portraits, landscapes, or something else. The intention of this study is to familiarize yourself with the setup. This way, you know which colors you will use, the value range, and if the composition is working before you start your main painting. This is also a good way to decide if you feel excited enough by a project to commit to the time it takes to make a larger painting. If by the time you are finished making a study, you no longer feel intrigued by the subject matter, you then know and you didn't have to find out halfway through a more complex work. When I make a study, my aim is not to make a highly rendered painting. I will focus on the larger areas of value and how they work in relationship to each other to create a good light effect. I will also focus on the composition of my still life and I will see if the colors I have mixed replicate what I see in nature. The first thing I will do is to make a few marks with a color called raw umber. This is the same pigment that I will use when I make the underpainting for the main painting later on. In my studies, I'm generally never super focused or strict with the measurements and the drawing of the objects. But even though the drawing is not my main focus, I like to make a simple map showing where everything is placed before I start adding on the color mixes. These simple lines that I'm making here will be quite similar to the first marks I will make when starting the main painting. What I would do next, however, in a larger work is to make a resolved underpainting. I will, however, not do this here, but save that for the main painting. After I have a simple drawing of the setup, I then start adding on the colors. The first thing I do is to fill in some of the background. This is because the background holds the darkest value. When I have established this in the painting, I can use this dark value to relate the other values to. This will make it easier to decide the contrast and to immediately get a light effect going in the study. When I am laying in this background color, I am also taking the opportunity to work a little bit more with the contour line of the objects. Even though the drawing is not the main purpose with the study, I like to render it a bit more if I have the time, because sometimes I think these studies can turn out as smaller, delicate paintings in their own right. Making a study is a great way to remember your painting if you sell it, and another great thing about studies is that they can work as future inspirations for compositions and color combinations in the setup. When I have covered a large area of the background, which consists of the darkest value in the setup, I then apply the brightest value in the setup, the highlights. This way I have established the whole value range I will be working with. Every other color mix and value has to relate to these two outer points to make sure the visual impression of what we are seeing is believable. After I have placed the highlights on the vase, I then finish applying the background value. The next value I will apply is the darkest value of the lavender flowers. This is because it's important that this value works in relationship to the background and to the brighter areas of the lavender flowers. It needs to be dark enough to turn the form of the flowers back into space to create atmosphere along the contour line, but not too dark because then it will disappear. This is the moment where you see if your color mixes really work or if you have to make some small adjustments to them. When I am painting these darker notes in the flowers, I am squinting to simplify the areas of value so I see and relate to larger areas of value at the time. This is what I will do in my main painting as well, as my painting process is going from larger, more simplified shapes and breaking these into smaller, more complex ones. What I will do next is just to build my way up into the light in these lavender flowers, going from dark to light. 
Again, I'm squinting and focusing on the larger areas of value for this part. One thing to think of when painting these flowers is the direction that they are moving in. This will help you get the character of them. When I'm painting, I'm also thinking of the texture and the feel of what I'm observing to try and implement that in my study. This is an important aspect of getting to know the objects in your setup that will help you create the main painting. After I've painted the flowers, I then start to work on the stems. I use the same way of building up the larger areas of light and dark, starting by adding in the shadows. I then add the general light shape of the stems that I see when I squint. Before I paint the brightest value in the stems, I add in the reflected light happening on the right side of the highlights. This light explains the round volume and shape of the vase. To decide the contrast relationship between this shape and the shapes around it is a good one to explore in the study. This will help you determine how strong or subtle this shape really is. Moving on, I then paint a few of the brighter notes in the stems. I don't paint all the stems in the study, but focus on the ones where the light hits the strongest. The next object I will study is the vase. This vase is quite dark in the setup because it's made of see-through gloss, which will adapt to its surroundings. The gloss does, however, have a soft bluish tint, which is prominent in certain places in the contour of the vase. To decide the color intensity and value of this blue versus the background is a good relationship to explore in the study. I lay in a darker mixture tinted blue for the vase in the contour. Then I add in a more neutral value towards the middle of the vase, where the vase interacts with the stems. On each side of the stems on the upper half of the vase, I will put some darker value because here the vase melts more into the background. One thing I have noticed when laying in the vase is that the reflected light in the middle of the vase needs to be brighter to work in relationship with its surroundings. I also bring this brighter value around the highlight to integrate the highlight more onto the vase, not just floating on top of it. One element I still haven't added is the little lavender flower in the foreground. Before I add in the darker foreground value it's placed on, I'll just make sure I include it. Then I add in the foreground. Including this area is really going to bring up the visual impression of the image and give a stronger sense of a light effect in the study. Now I have all the main elements working together in my study except for one, the shell. 
the first thing I do is to lay in the shadow shapes. Then I lay in the general light shape I see when I squint. I am also going to add some of the half tones in between the light shape and the shadow shape to see how my premix colors work together and if they meet in a good way. I am not, however, going to model the form and shape of the shell too much. It's just about getting that visual impression of it compared to the other objects. After I have the shell in place, I'm going to paint the cast shadow it's making on the right. This will ground it and having this darker value next to the shell, it will also give it a higher contrast which in turn will make it seem brighter. I also add in the little cast shadow under the lavender flower in the foreground to brighten up the contrast and light a bit. This will also help ground it. Now that I have all these elements in the painting, I can see how they work together and I can more easily see if something seems a bit out of place. The first area I want to correct and just add a bit more information to are the stems. The first thing I want to change is the shadow value of them. It needs to be a bit darker and I'm also going to find more specifically the shapes of them. This is going to help the visual impression a lot and will also give me a more truthful study to relate to. To up the light effect in the study even more, I'm also going in the opposite direction in the stems, and I paint a few of the brightest notes even brighter. The next area that needs a bit more information is the line where the vase ends. This line doesn't need a lot of information, rather it only needs a few notes of value to indicate where it's happening. One of those nodes will be a highlight that travels in a diagonal up from where the main highlight hits on the vase. The other nodes of value that occur to explain this line will be quite subtle. This is a great example of a line in nature usually never just being a line. It's a combination of different values working together creating the impression of a line moving in space. If you just went in with one value to explain this line, the line would seem flat and lose its three-dimensionality. After I've painted this line, I then make another pass on the outline of the vase. I think the value on the right side could be a bit darker because when I squint it disappears into space much more. I also correct the drawing of the outline slightly to get more the correct shape of it. Looking at the painting, my eye keeps coming back to the shell. I think I can actually brighten it a little bit more and add some cooler value in the light shape. The last element I haven't included which needs to be part of the study are the little lavender petals that are spread around the lavender flower in the foreground. These small petals can be an important design element, so to get these in and see how they work is important for the whole composition of the painting. Having added so much more contrast and light effect in the shell and in the stems, I now feel I could also do this in the lavender flowers. To make these brighter areas of the flower pop, meaning stand out from the flowers more drawn back into the shadow, I paint these with a thicker layer of paint. This texture and design decision is also something to potentially bring into the main painting. I also add in some of the brighter stems in between the now brighter lavender flowers. To make sure one gets the sense that everything happening in this area is hit by the same type of light source. Then I add in more of the darker notes as well to get more the sense of the different groupings of the flower. The very last thing I do is to add in the reflection that the seashell is casting in the vase. This reflection is also going to help convey the glass texture of the vase and to paint it to study the value of it is a good thing to do before painting the main image.
Okay, so now I think I will call this study done. I now feel I have explored the visual impression of my setup and I also feel confident in the color mixes and values I have chosen for this painting. Painting this study has made me certain that I want to make a larger painting with this setup, though I think I will leave more space around the objects in my main painting. I feel like the space around the setup in my study is a little bit too tight and I want to create more atmosphere and air around it. I also think I will look more into a clever way to use the lavender petals in the foreground to create a more harmonious design. Maybe I'll place them more between the flowers and the shell to create more interest in the foreground. Now, I hope you enjoyed this little lesson on why creating a study is a great tool and I also hope that you feel inspired to make a study yourself before your next painting if you've never tried it.